Hello and welcome back to another video, or if you're new here, I'm Michael, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be learning all about compression. So I'm going to go over all the basics, you know, attack, release, threshold, what all the dials do, but far more importantly, I'm going to be going beyond the theory and trying to show you how to hear compression. So I'm going to be going really into detail about how to hear compression so you actually know how to apply it in a mix. I think a lot of us know the general theory behind it, but actually getting it to work in a mix without just turning dials randomly and hoping for the best, um, that's what I'm really going to try and help you with in this video, having some focus behind what you're doing with your compression. I've got plenty of examples to demonstrate different compression techniques, and there are loads of different ways to use compression. But a simple way uh, that I think a lot of us know is that, you know, with audio, you've got quiet parts and loud parts. The idea is that the compression compresses the loud parts so that they become a bit more quiet. And now when you raise the gain, overall, the quiet and loud part are now both loud, both full, fat, in your face, you know, those sorts of words. Now, that's a very basic way to use compression. Other ways include being able to adjust the transient of the sound, so making something more punchy or less punchy and smooth. And you can also use compression to adjust the sustain of a sound, which is very common in electric guitar where you want notes to just ring out for ages and ages. So let's just dive right in and we'll take a look at compression. I'm going to be demonstrating these compression techniques on a vocal from a song that I did with a friend called Calvin. All the details are in the description if you're interested, um, because vocals seem to be really challenging to process and it's what I'm asked about all the time. I'm using FL Studio 20, but you can use any DAW and you can use any compressor. They all look a little bit different, but they all have the same basic functionality. The first core principle when compressing almost anything, and I, I really hate giving rules in audio because, you know, there's no real rules but just don't bother doing it in solo. It just doesn't help you. You can listen to the vocal in solo for the sake of it, but when you're adjusting the parameters, you really must listen to everything together. And I'll quickly justify why I say this. Unlike other effects like EQ or reverb, where sometimes it can actually help to solo and really hear something in detail, with compression, it's all about dynamics, levels, and transients. And because of that, you need to hear it with reference to something else. You have to hear the whole rest of the band, the rest of the instrumental, because otherwise you're just blindly setting a level in comparison to nothing and you do not know whether it's going to sound good or not. I've wasted countless hours compressing stuff in solo till it sounded good, then it didn't sound good in the track. So that's the first thing. We're going to listen to everything together. And just to um, make a point of this, I'm going to start by listening to this vocal in solo. This is with no compression and there doesn't really appear to be anything wrong with it when I listen in solo. So I'm really listening to the starts of the words, how punchy are they, the ends of the words, can I hear the vibrato, do I hear all the low-level information, and in solo, I absolutely do hear it. I'll turn the reverb off as well, so we're just hearing the vocal. I've been drifting, drifting away with you tonight. So I'll play a little bit more later, but I could hear all of that. I could hear all the little ends of the words, like tonight, I could hear this little T here. It was all clear. Why would I even want to compress it? However, if I play it in context of the whole track, you'll hear that a whole heap of issues spring up. On In Solo, this was a confident vocal performance, really well projected. I thought it sounded great. In the context of the track, all of a sudden you can't hear the ends of the words very well, especially on speakers. The vocal just drifts wildly up and down in volume, and it does not sound confident. It almost sounds anxious. So let's take a listen. Uh, there's these really aggressive guitars that sort of compete with the vocal a lot. So let's take a listen. I've been drifting, drifting away with you tonight. So that was really confusing. A lot of the time it just felt too quiet, but there was also sections, like on this second phrase, where it was just far too loud on certain words. The same with this final phrase. I'm just going to tune in on this one again. It was super loud, but also quiet at the end. Drifting away. Like drifting and away just shoot out of the headphones and then the rest of it tails away and it doesn't sound good so this is why you have to listen in context of the whole 
track. The second principle is that it really helps to have an aim. At least 70% of the time when compressing, I'm trying to actually have a clear aim of what to do. The other 30% is just wild sound design and hoping for the best, okay? But what I'm going to show you is the difference between the compressed and uncompressed audio. So I've already compressed this and I'll show you the difference. So the top one here is the original signal and the bottom is the compressed signal. And to an untrained eye, they don't actually look that different. But if we take a really close look, what you'll see is that overall the compressed version just looks fatter. There's less difference between the peak and the rest of the sort of uh, low level information. If I take the compressed signal and just drag it on top of the original signal, you'll see that the peak values don't change that much, but overall the waveform just becomes a lot more thick and fat, especially in areas like this third phrase here, where the vocal starts to trail away in the middle and become really sort of weak and anxious. On the compressed version, it stays strong through that phrase. If I zoom right into the end phrase here, the uncompressed one starts small, gets really, really large, and then it ends really, really tiny at the end here. And what you could hear was that that's okay in solo, but with the rest of the guitars, at this point we hear too much of it, and then the guitars just overlap, and there's this frequency masking, and we can't hear what we want. Whereas on the compressed one, starts medium, ends up medium, gets slightly louder, and then it ends up with a nice thick, bold signal at the end. And even though we've altered the dynamics a lot, the start of each word still jumps out of the speakers, there's still a nice punch on it. Now the next question is, if we're just changing the volume, why would we even use compression? Why wouldn't you just go in with an automation clip on a gain plugin or a fader and just adjust each little bit of every word up and down like crazy? The answer is, you probably should do that as well. So that kind of gain automation is excellent, especially if you're being paid to do a mix for someone, spend an hour or two doing it. It takes ages. It's a skill that takes a long time to develop. And for a three minute vocal, you could well spend 45 minutes or an hour just doing the gain automation to make sure that you're actually helping it and not harming it. It's not something that's simple to do. Whereas for most of us that aren't being paid a ton to do a commercial mix, and we just want our vocals to sound good quickly, Often if you can set up a compressor or two in a couple of minutes to just make the vocal fit in the mix, that's all we're really looking for. We're not going for absolute perfection. We just don't, we just want it to sound confident and not sound weak. And I mean, absolutely no offense to Calvin for saying that. He's a fantastic singer. It's just the way it works with the microphone and the way the frequencies mask in the mix. It can take a confident vocal performance and just sort of turn it on its head. So now that I've shown you what the compression looks like, I'm going to let you hear it on two of the phrases here and then the other two. So I'll start with the compression turned off and just notice how some words just jump out randomly and the ends of the words just trail away under the guitars and don't sound confident. And then when I kick the compression in, it all sounds a lot more balanced and you can really hear the vibrato and all the wonderful detail in the vocal. So let's take a listen. I've been drifting Drifting away I've been drifting Drifting away That's just so much better. Now we're going to listen to the second phrase and what I want you to really listen for is tonight at the end this T just gets sort of buried under the mix but with the compression it's right forward and you can hear all the detail and emotion in the voice. And then at the end here notice how leave Again, without the compression, just trails away, but with the compression, it's really confident, really in your face. So let's take a listen. With you tonight, oh, I just might pack my bags and leave. With you tonight, oh, I just might pack my bags and leave. I really, really hope you can hear a big difference between those two examples. Definitely go back and listen again if you're struggling to hear the differences. Try to listen on speakers as well because you'll hear the sound sort of in 3D a little bit better. But the difference with the compression is just astonishing to how confident it makes his singing sound. It sounds so much more natural, even though technically there's quite a lot of compression there, which you'd think would be unnatural. So right, let's dive right in. And I'll go through all the settings. We'll talk about the attack, release, threshold, ratio, you name it. Let's get right into it. 
The compressor that I'm choosing to use is the Ozone 9 Dynamics uh, compressor because I just think it's quite a visual way of representing the settings. However, just use any compressor. Uh, they're all going to have their own quirks, their own ups and downs, sound a little bit different. I'm going to add this after my EQ. It can be good to sort of cut away the low end, fix a few frequency problems first, and then feed that signal into the compressor. It just tends to work better, but don't be afraid of, you know, doing EQ before and after. Uh, I often like to DS vocals before I put them into the compressor. But anyway, that's enough of that. Let's dive through all these settings. This plugin happens to be a limiter and compressor in one because they're very closely linked, but I'm not going to be using the limiting section at all. So I've got my threshold, ratio, attack, release. I've got my parallel processing, my makeup gain. You'll be able to find these settings in virtually any compressor you're using. The first thing to do uh, and I'll explain what all these settings do in more detail. Set the ratio so that it's more than one to one. Set it to something at least two to one. This means that when we adjust other settings, there will be compression. And I'll explain why in a minute. The first thing I'm going to do, this is probably the only time that I'm going to set something by looking at the screen and the output. Every other dial, I'm just going to set by listening to it. Okay. So I'm going to adjust the threshold until I can see that I'm getting some sort of compression. I'll also hear it. And what this will sound like is just a reduction in volume. Initially, it's not actually going to sound any better at all. It's just going to sound like my vocal is being randomly reduced in volume. So let's take a listen and we'll lower this threshold until the signal is passing over the threshold. Now the threshold is in dB. So if my threshold is at minus 20, that means the signal needs to go over minus 20 before we get any processing. So let's play. So we're not getting any compression there, so I'll just lower it. Now I can see that we're getting some gain reduction. So right there you can see on the screen here, there's some gain reduction. It says maybe minus 6, minus 7 dBs. And also down here, there was a little gain reduction readout. How this is shown in every compressor is a bit different. But for now, I'm just looking to get some compression just so I can get a flavor for it. Don't try to aim for any specific numbers. I know some. I know loads of people say 3 to 6 dB of compression, but to be honest, sometimes I need 15 dBs for it to sound good, and other times I don't need any compression at all. So you've just got to do what sounds right. So for now, I've set the compression threshold as minus 25 dB, and this means that whenever the signal passes over minus 25 dB, so is greater than that, the signal processing is going to be applied. However, I need to give it some makeup gain at the end because right now my signal's being reduced on average by, you know, four, five, six dB. So I need to add at least a few dB of makeup gain at the end back so that we're back to the original volume we started at. So I'm just going to set this by bypassing the plugin and seeing if there's like a massive change in volume or anything like that. So let's just press play. I've been drifting, drifting away. So at around 3 dB, there wasn't a big difference when I turned the plugin on and off. Right now, the compression that's being uh, applied is just random. It's just based on these uh, settings which the uh, compressor opened up with. So let's adjust all the important settings right now. The first one is the ratio. Now this confuses people like crazy, and I'm going to try and make this as simple as I can. So looking at the ratio, a ratio of 2 to 1 would be considered quite a gentle ratio. What the 2 to 1 means is that if you want to get 1 dB out of this compressor, you have to go 2 dB over the threshold. So if I push past the threshold by, say, 4 dB, it's actually going to be cut down by 2 decibels. So it's basically going to be cut in half after the threshold. So if I increase the ratio to 5 to 1, what that means is that if my signal goes over the threshold by 5 dB, it's going to be cut back down by 4 dB, and we're only going to be left with 1, which is a much more harsh form of compression. And if I keep pushing this, 10 to 1, 20 to 1, you have to go 20 dB past the threshold to get 1 dB out, which means you're practically limiting. So often a limiter is described as a compressor with an infinite ratio, because as soon as the signal touches the threshold, it's just kicked back down or chopped off. So if we take our ratio back, what I'm going to be doing is trying to get quite a bit of uh, gentle compression applied on almost every word. So I don't want the compression to just take down just only the top bits. I kind of want to have this gentle compression to smooth out the whole performance. 
if you have a vocal that's like very very consistent and then there's just one word that jumps up like crazy then maybe you want to set quite a strong ratio to just really sort of peg down that one word but in my case it's kind of just all over the place so i'm just going to set a gentle ratio try to get uh, some compression going the whole time so the next two controls are really closely linked attack and release so after the signal has passed the threshold it's loud how quickly do we want to take uh, the gain away from it so naturally a fast attack time of zero milliseconds or one millisecond that's going to remove the transient from the sound so that sharp increase in volume it's just going to smooth it out and this makes vocals sound really really heavy almost muffled whereas if you have a really really long attack time all those transients are going to get through they're not going to have any compression and they're going to start sounding a little bit all over the place so lots of people give you specific numbers to aim for 5 10 15 milliseconds whatever i actually much prefer to just uh, pretend this dial has no numbers on it at all and just set it until it sounds right typically for me that's a longer attack so that i retain a lot of punch and transient one of the biggest mistakes i hear with beginners is a super fast attack time the vocals just start sounding like mush i'm just going to loop this first phrase so that you can hear uh, the attack on i've that first word if i make the attack really short the word sort of just mushes away really long i get a really punchy transient so let's start in the middle and i'll adjust those now I've been drifting. Been drifting. Been drifting. So I hope you could hear that when we had the really short attack time, the start of that word just turned to mush, basically. So I like having quite a generous attack time, maybe somewhere around 50 milliseconds, but please don't copy these settings. Just set it till it sounds right. So what I'm going to do is go over to this section now, just a different part of the vocal. I want to make sure that I can hear the transients on each of these words. If I can't or I feel they're being mushed, I'm going to have to increase my attack time a little bit more. Oh, I just might pack my bags and leave. So that sounds really good, especially on words like bags. That just jumped through at the start, sounded really punchy. Something that you might have seen me do there that I do all the time, but not in tutorials, is close my eyes. So if I'm listening to something, close the eyes. All of a sudden, your brain has no inputs, really, besides, you know, what you can feel and what you can hear so your brain becomes a lot more sensitive to sound when you close your eyes it's why at night like everything just sounds so loud i don't know if you've ever woken up at night every little creak and click and everything just sounds super loud so close your eyes let your brain really focus on the audio ignore what the processor is doing in front of you if you can't if you can or you can't hear the transients that's what you're really listening for you're listening for that punch at the start of each word Okay, I'm aware that I'm uh, going on a bit. So the release time, this is the opposite of the attack. This is, okay, so once the signal has fallen below the threshold, how quickly does the compressor recover? So if the compressor recovers immediately, what happens is the vocal just chops up and down in volume really suddenly. Sounds really weird. But if it's too slow, the vocal just sounds like it's bogged down because the compression is just always being applied, which means we're basically just turning our vocal down. So I'll show you both let's start with a really fast attack time initially you're you'll hear the vocal jump up and down a bit as i push the attack time much longer you'll hear that the vocal just sounds like it's i'm just turning it down basically I've been drifting, drifting away with you so what i like doing is setting the release musically and this can be a bit easier to do on drums but we want to hear the compressor open back up, add the gain to the ends of those phrases, and just recover in between words. So you can see this visibly on the trace here, but use your ears as well. I've been drifting, you see how it completely recovers between words. With you so the idea behind this is that when the vocal's loud, the compression's active, and then the compressor releases and then everything else that isn't being compressed has this makeup gain applied to it so basically everything gets a boost of 3 dbs besides those loudest parts and that's why all that low level detail is pulled up by 3 db it's as though we've pushed the fader up by 3 db but also turned the loud bits down 
this knee control is not on all compressors. It's on a lot of digital ones, but um, this kind of m makes that threshold softer. So instead of just applying yes or no, it's sort of got this maybe zone where it starts applying compression. It can make it sound really, really uh, soft. As you develop your ears for this, you'll be able to hear a bigger difference. I'm just going to keep this in the middle for now. I don't think many people will hear it right away. And the next thing I'm going to do is uh, this parallel processing here. So on most compressors, there's a dry wet knob or a slider in this case. Wet means co the completely processed signal. Dry means original signal. You probably already knew that, sorry. But um, what I like to do is I like to back off the compressed signal just a little bit, maybe to 70 or 80. And this just lets a little bit more of the natural sound come through. You might feel it more than you hear it. I don't know, it's kind of weird to, to describe. So let's do another before and after. I'm going to focus on the second half of the phrase because I know we've listened to that first half a lot. Uh, this middle bit here on the first phrase, this kind of dips down, is really quiet, and then the end gets quiet again. So let's take a listen uh, before and after. With you tonight Oh, I just might pack my bags and leave With you tonight Oh, I just might pack my bags and leave. So overall, that's just done a fantastic job of controlling uh, the vocal volume, even on quite a challenging vocal here. So I'm just about to go over and show you some guitar processing, but I hope that helps sort of explain what those settings do and really helps you hear the compression. And I really would stress this point one more time is that even though listening with everything together makes it you'd think it would make it harder to hear the differences. You hear the differences in compression so much more when you listen to everything together. I, I just, I cannot stress it enough how many hours I've wasted um, by compressing stuff in solo. For sound design, it can work, but for like vocals and guitars, compressing it in solo, you're pretty much on your own. You've got no reference. So definitely listen to everything together. Don't be afraid to adjust the parameters and really listen out for what they're doing. The next thing I want to show you is this really cool little melody Calvin played on guitar, how we fit it into the mix, and how we use compression to increase the sustain of the guitar, because it was an acoustic guitar, uh, which doesn't typically have a whole lot of sustain compared to an electric guitar. Let's take a listen. <laughs> So those notes just last forever, okay? But what we did is we had uh, some EQ and a reverb, but we noticed that it just didn't, the reverb just didn't seem to last a long time. There wasn't much sustain on the guitar. And when we increased the reverb size, it just became like a really massive reverb, but it didn't, it didn't sustain the way we wanted to. So what we instead decided to do was use compression to lower the volume of the start of each guitar pluck and just allow a whole load of makeup gain to be applied to the tail. So what we're listening for here is that the sustain and reverb just becomes so much bigger when I turn the compressor on. So I'll start with it turned off, and then I'll turn it on. I'll try to keep this one really brief, but this time you don't change the threshold. The threshold is just set and you add more uh, compression by just increasing the input gain and then adjusting the output gain so that it's the same sort of volume. The attack and release are in the middle here and you see that I have sort of like a, a medium fast release. So once the sound is pegged down a bit, turned down, it very quickly recovers and there's a lot of makeup gain applied. And what this does is it means the guitar can be increased in volume a lot without the transients being really, really pokey in the mix. I still want the transients to sit back a little bit. And if you see the gain reduction meter, as soon as the gain reduction starts recovering back to nothing, you just hear the reverb swell back up, which is exactly what we wanted. We didn't want to add more length of reverb, we just wanted more volume of the reverb to swell back up. And this is like a very common technique that's used in electric guitar processing where you want a lot of sustain. It's why guitarists love, absolutely adore compression pedals for electric guitar. It just adds so much more sustain to the sound, smooth everything out. So to prevent this video getting super long, I'm going to 
call it a day there, but I'm going to come back and do another video on drum processing because that takes a lot of the rules of compression and just turns them on their head again. It's really fun. But I hope this has helped uh, simplify a lot of the terms. Ask me any questions in the comment section down below. And I hope you have a really nice week. See you later, guys. Bye for now.